Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. We're joined on Corn School today by Dale Cowan, Agris Cooperative uh, Agronomist. Hey, Dale, how's it going? Hey, pretty good, Bernie. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Hey, you, uh, you've you joined us a number of times on the Corn School, uh, and we're going to talk drones today. And in the past, you've talked drones, you know, from a field mapping perspective, yep. management zones. We're going to do something a little different today. We're going to talk about drone spraying. Yes. What have you been up to? Well, we've uh, Chuck Barisage uh, arranged for a demo with this company that's trying to market these drones in Canada, and so they were kind enough to come to the field. So it was more of a of a curiosity demonstration. Well, what can it do? And uh, so we decided to spray some glyphosate on, on a field that's going in the soybeans. So uh, they set up the drone, and uh, we just see how it was performing. And it was uh, it was kind of interesting to watch. These things are, are a lot of fun and really cool. And the question is, can you make money with cool? And what 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 about observations? You saw these in uh, any from a farming practicality perspective. What any conclusions immediately that you've drawn? Well, I think uh, they're never going to replace a big sprayer. They just don't have the capacity uh, or the or the swath width to do that sort of thing. But I I think maybe down the road we'll we'll find a fit for them in in uh, a smaller capacity, maybe something more site specific and and uh, fixing small areas in the field that we otherwise would, would ignore. So I, I think we have some work to do. It's, it's an ultra low volume spray and so I think we have some questions around that. So what do we need to do? I mean what do you need to do to evaluate this to find a fit? Well so we've been, I've been back uh, a week later after we sprayed and uh, looking at some, uh, we just put on glyphosate so you know we put uh, 0.6 liters of glyphosate on in less than two liters of water so our first you know, observation was how good was the coverage. So, quite frankly, it was uh, it was only a second demo, and it was a marginal day for spraying. Anyways, we wouldn't have sprayed with a ground rig necessarily, so it was more of a demo. And you know, some of the dandelions are, are pretty pretty affected, and some dandelions have no spray on them at all. So it's it's a question of this coverage: is how good can the coverage be at two and a half liter to the acre? So that's that's something that's got our curiosity peaked, and how do you make that better? And and so that's a big question mark right now: is just kind of the coverage on it. Yeah. What about uh, you, you mentioned? You know, wind, and uh, we were always challenged with ground sprayers. Yep. What's it like to have uh, 20 drones going around uh, a field in the wind? Well, you know, wind speed's wind speed. If it's too windy for a ground rig, it's too windy for a drone. And so we we didn't I didn't see any advantage there on wind speed with the drone. It's still uh, it's still coming out of a nozzle. So if it's too windy for a ground rig, it's too windy for for a drone. And running in swarms, you know. <clears throat> 10 liter tank doesn't go very far so if you're running 10 liters as a swarm or 10 drones as a swarm all 10 are going to come back empty together and they need to be filled up again so it's a question of field efficiencies talk about um, i guess you know we've got some great spraying specialists in the province jason devoe and other people you know what would you like to see them do i mean from an evaluation perspective maybe find a fit for these well if, if we're going to talk about spraying herbicides you know you, you first thing you're looking at is these concentrated spray solutions you mean if you're going to attack weed resistance management we always talk about the multiple modes of action so if you're going to put three chemicals in a tank you could literally be spraying two liters of pure chemical a half liter of water is that even something that's realistic to even attempt and so what is the right carrier? What is the mix? And you know these these chemicals are formulated for a certain carrier volume, of much more than than a liter of the acre. So so we just need to understand is, you know, is this even something that's viable? And so the risk would be, for example, a really concentrated spray solution if it actually burns the leaf before absorption takes place and translocation to the site of action, then we've accomplished nothing. Uh, actually, we've probably increased weed resistance uh, selection pressure. So, so we need some, some work on, on volume and, and, and targeting that spray. Mm -hmm. What about, uh, I, guess, I guess, the question is, you know, the look down the road for me. I mean, are we gonna park our sprayers and uh, gonna have a, a, a scrap heap? Well, I don't see that happening. There's no comparison between a 120-foot boom and a 1,000-gallon tank and a, and a drone with two nozzles that covers 15 feet uh, with a 10-liter tank. That's not the comparison. You know, it's when it comes to spraying, both the big sprayer and the drone, all they're doing is hauling nozzles around the field. So it's the nozzles that are important that are putting the volume on the target. So it's really that question of, is it an effective tool to, to do any kind of spraying? And, probably we'd be looking at something like a spot spraying scenario where you're going out and doing small areas that were a ground rig wouldn't be worth going in you'd trample more than you'd fix so is this something that we could 
get a drone to do is take all the little small areas the size of a pickup truck that you know collectively could be a couple acres can can we do some spot spraying and be very specific have the dexterity to go do that kind of work that could give us a small profit gain you know what do you see as a potential here where, where might this go well so I, I think you have to kind of look a little to the future and look at uh, all the scanning technology and the internet of things and the logarithms and all those return on investment calculators. So I think, uh, you know, we're looking at a company right now called Terranus is out of Israel. They just bought Mavericks, a large satellite imaging company we've been using and continue to use. And they're bringing a new technology, uh, sense, uh, scanning technology to the marketplace. And basically they've created their own drones about half the size of a small compact car. They fly at 60 feet above the field between optics and multi-scan sensors. They create images that are a millimeter pixel in size, ultra fine, and they have the logarithms on board and it's interpreting the image while it's flying. So essentially when the drone lands, not only is the scan done, the scouting report is done too. And since it's on the cloud and wireless connection, it could theoretically crunch all the uh, the values in there and say where a threshold has been breached on a certain insect because they can actually claim they can actually identify the insects and, and by the characteristics of the disease, identify the disease and decide whether a, a solution is needed. You could theoretically fly the field and send a script automatically to a drone that's waiting to spray or to a ground rig if it's warranted a, a big enough problem to warrant a ground application. So you start you know, looking at all the scanning technology all linked together getting some knowledge into a database and being able to automate some of this uh, flying and scouting and if it works as promised that's a real game changer so i think that's kind of the future of of having uh being very detailed in the field because not all problems are across the field they start small and can we catch them early and so so i think this this whole idea is is this getting all the scanning technology linked together into a seamless expert system that can analyze and, and execute uh, a strategy for application